Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. As you probably guessed from the video title, we have kind of an update video for you today. We're going to start things out with some RDNA free information, just kind of going over some highlights. And then we're going to discuss an RDNA free refresh. We're going to move on to RDNA 4 and also some other things for AMD's CPU. There's a lot of stuff to get through here, so without any further ado, let's get right into it. After, of course, this message from the video's sponsor. And yeah, on with the show. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as home keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. To tackle the most obvious point, you may notice I'm wearing the exact same t-shirt as yesterday's video. Why is that, I hear you ask? Well, it's because they're filmed on the same day. Power of editing, people. But anyway, let's begin with some interesting information for AMD's RDNA 3 in terms of the release schedule. Now, there has been a very intriguing thing, and that is that in a recent, you know, AMD event, they have essentially admitted through a financial analyst that, um, yeah, RDNA 3's high end is launching this year. Now, it's very interesting, though, because from what I'm ascertaining from multiple sources, the release date seems to have been pushed back. As many of you know by now, um, Ryzen 7000 Zen 4 is going to be released in September. Um, I basically leaked it was going to be the 15th, and now WCCF Tech and a couple of other publications are stating the same thing. But interestingly, I'd heard initial plans for Narve 31 was to launch in October, but this seems to have been pushed back to some point in November. At the moment, I don't have an exact release date. But it's kind of interesting because initially I was told Narve 31 was this year, Narve 33 was late this year. I'll say late November for the sake of this video, but I don't know, only it was late this year. And Narve 32 was next year. So initially I'd heard that um, the mobile Narve 33 was going to launch at some point um, early next year with an announcement most likely going to take place at CES. But just because of stuff that has happened, mainly the oversupply of graphics cards, with Narve 33 being roughly equivalent to Narve 21, basically AMD had just decided to delay things. So as far as I understand it anyway, it's not through design issues or problems. It's basically just the fact that it makes more sense to launch the high end first as AMD themselves have kind of confirmed and then later on they'll start filling out their lineup. So now just a couple of other small things for RDNA 3. The first is that the TBP total board power figure seem to have increased for the reference designs. Basically speaking, it's gone from 375 to 405 watts with custom boards from the likes of MSI or PowerColor or whomever. They can go up to 450 watts. Now, this seems to be an increase because I'd previously heard and been told that the top flagship was only 375 watts. So, one of two things is possible here. One, AMD have increased the figures or one of those two figures has always been wrong. I'm not sure which one it is. Um, but it's going to be quite interesting anyway to see how all of this turns out because, um, yeah, ultimately, of course, we're all going to be seeing AMD and NVIDIA vying for performance. Uh, to my personal understanding, there has been a lot of confusion regarding the performance. We're talking raster here. I've heard everything from like two times Narve 21 up to around 2.5 times, again, in raster performance. Everyone's stating different figures, and it's hard to know whether some of this is deliberate misinformation from AMD, or whether some of it is just because, you know, we're talking about early test boards, so the frequencies weren't as high. Uh, Narve 31 is supposed to hit around 3 gigahertz. so was it because, for example, there were problems? Was it something else? It's very hard to know. Personally speaking, I'm predicting around 2.2 to 2.3 times. I would love to be wrong. I'd love for it to be like 8 times, but obviously that's not realistic. Um, it's going to be interesting, though, to see how 
AMD as well as Nvidia actually market these GPUs. Um, regarding the pricing, I've been hearing about $1,500 for the highest end SKUs, but frankly, I just would not take that with any level of confidence. I would have that like with the same level of confidence as I would trying to like you know ride a unicycle across a uh, rope with myself juggling chainsaws and sharks underneath it because prices can change literally until the last moment a small update to the SKUs list so you guys might remember this from a previous video but i've also been given these figures so the 7950x is 84 cu 42 workgroup uh, processors 7600 is 16 and finally the 7600 xt sorry the 7600 xt is 16 and the 7600 is 14 workgroup processors i'm unsure which of the two which of the two sets of specifications is correct it's possible that Initially, one was correct, and then there has been an update, and I'm not sure which is which, so I'm putting both sets out now, and then obviously, of course, we'll figure out when the announcement happens. Now, I do also want to talk about an RDNA 3 refresh. Now, to be clear, guys, this is not something that we're not going to need to worry about anytime soon, and obviously, we're talking about a product launch which has not even been announced yet, and so things could change, but to my understanding, anyway, if AMD does launch this, it's going to be a late next year at the earliest. RDNA 4 is basically scheduled to be late 2024 slash early 2025. We'll get more into that in a moment. So it does make sense for some type of mid-generation refresh. AMD have done it multiple times in the past. So have Nvidia. So it's just about everyone. It's not really surprising. But basically speaking, what you're looking at here is the same architecture as previously. So there's not like any major changes. There's not like, I don't know, the ability to suddenly clean your house by leaping out of your PC and, you know, doing the housework at night. But there are some small changes, some bumps in specifications, predominantly, as you can see on screen, regarding the memory configuration. It seems that we could be looking at up to 24 GBPS and memory speeds. Some SKUs have also allegedly seen a bump in the number of work group processors. Now, honestly, I think RDNA 3 is going to be just selling out really well anyway. I suspect that this generation of cards is going to be super duper popular. But for those who do want to hang on, this refresh could be kind of interesting. I suspect mobile could perhaps be even more intriguing. I have been hearing some rumors... Uh, I don't think this is a refresh of Narve 32 for laptops, but at the moment, I'm really early on that information, so I'm just kind of mentioning in brief. So, as I mentioned earlier, RDNA uh, 4, I was about to say 3, is targeting late 2024, early 2025. This is not really surprising information. It pretty much sticks with AMD's, you know, two-year roughly cycle. And again, you know, AMD, NVIDIA are all kind of doing that same cycle. It's pretty common in the tech industry at this point. Um, and yeah, uh, that's not really new, as well as the fact that it's using GDDR7 memory. At the end of the day, it wasn't going to be using some, you know, random technology. We know that GDDR7 is being established and will be ready by that point. So that's not particularly new. However, there are a couple of very interesting things I've been hearing about AMD's upcoming, upcoming architecture. The first of which is that performance is up considerably over RDNA 3. Now, I don't have performance targets at the moment, sorry about that, but I was told that we could be seeing a quite similar leap from RDNA 2 to 3 by one person, although honestly that information is pretty shaky. However, multiple people have told me that as big a leap as RDNA 2 to 3 is, we could maybe even see similar for RDNA 4. Furthermore, clock speeds are going up noticeably as well. Now, what's quite interesting about this is that RDNA 3, with Narve 31, as I've mentioned multiple times, can hit around 3 gigahertz. And honestly, this makes sense given what they've done with RDNA 2. We know that the architecture really loves speed. In fact, RTX 40 from NVIDIA is probably going to be hitting around, you know, 3 gigahertz. I say around, you know, give or take 100, 200 megahertz. So RDNA 4 being faster does make some level of sense. However, it's also going to depend on a lot of other stuff that they do with the design, so it's kind of difficult to know whether that's true, but again, multiple people have told me that that is the case. But the most interesting thing is the fact that allegedly 
there is some new programmability on the GPU. So I'm sure you are quite aware that AMD purchased the Linux. And some of this technology, at least you can think of it as a very simplified explanation of what AMD are doing here, is going to make its way onto AMD's CPUs and GPUs. We'll get into the CPU side in a moment. But basically on the GPU side, I was told it's not a Linux block, so you cannot just look at a Linux product profile and be like, that's what they're doing. That's not going to work. But as you can see on screen, it does seem like there are going to be some intriguing things that this could do. Basically speaking, uh, this block, from what I understand, can work on a plethora of tasks. Machine learning, so tensor instructions, for example, as well as other things like ray tracing. Ultimately speaking, I'm not quite sure how this is implemented. I've actually been given a couple of explanations so far, but what I do understand is that it seems to be quite tightly connected with the Infinity Cache. Now, what I'm not certain of is whether this is connected via some type of bus to the MCDs, whether it's directly on the MCD. So, for example, the MCD, as you know, is not only the Infinity Cache, but it is also things, well, it's basically the memory controls as well. I don't know if that would be right, though. And again, because I'm not looking at block diagrams, and also information here is really sketchy, I'm not quite sure, but what I have been told by multiple sources is this is the case. It is not, however, again clear what all the functionality of this thing is, but it does seem to be really powerful, and it seems to fit AMD's like philosophy of having silicon, which is multi-purpose. NVIDIA, of course, have their own philosophy, you know, tensor cores and ray tracing cores and so on and so on. You guys get the drill. But with AMD, of course, uh, ray tracing units are basically being run on the TMUs and uh, you know, they've got machine learning, but of course it's being run in lower precision operations on the workgroup processors, slash ALUs, slash whatever you want to say. So this seems to be an extension of that, but how it all works, you know, under the hood, I'm not sure. All I do know is that it does make an awful lot of sense, especially when you consider AMD's flexibility with being able to build things for different purposes. For example, they could have a different configuration for prosumer workloads, or a different configuration for low-end GPUs, or a different configuration for an APU, or a different configuration for high-end desktop. You get the idea. So it's going to be very interesting to see how all of that plays out, assuming the information is accurate, but I do think it's quite likely that it is. Finally, just a few updates for Dragon Range as well as uh, Zen 5. So Dragon Range, of course, is basically Ryzen 7000 desktop processors in a laptop form. Um, clock frequencies are said to be really high. I've discussed Dragon Range multiple times before, so I'm not going to retread old information. But what I will say is it seems that there could be a Vcache variant being considered. Now, if this is true, um, obviously this will not improve GPU performance. We know that, basically speaking, the GPU performance of Dragon Range is essentially zero. Um, it has just essentially enough work group processing power to basically render a desktop. Um, however, what it does do is provide a lot of meaningful performance and possibly AMD having a quite good lead, at least for the, you know, this generation of products in mobile performance. There are a lot of rumors, I think Grayman's even mentioned this, and I've heard it multiple times, that the next generation of Vcache processors sees considerable improvements. One of the reasons that we didn't see Vcache for mobile, well, there are multiple reasons for this generation, but one of the big ones, as many of you know, there was a lot of heat density with the 5800X3D. Um, and allegedly in the next generation of products, this is improved considerably. Uh, switching though to um, Zen 5 from Zen 4, a couple of small updates. I've already done an extensive video discussing Zen 5 before with IPC targets and lots of other stuff, so I'm not going to go too much into this, but I will mention a couple of very small updates. It does seem that the core counts for Ryzen uh, Zen 5 is going to increase. It's going to double. Again, that's not new information. We've been hearing this. However, I'm almost certain at this point, if it does do this, they're basically going to double the number of cores per CCX, so rather than adding additional CCXs. So that's that's the first thing. And lastly, there does seem to be some type of accelerator blocks on the CPU. This is not new information. We've been hearing this in even kind of hinted officially by AMD that they want to do this. We've already seen other implementations of this most likely happening quite soon as well. 
so it's not really surprising but yeah oh and one final final thing i'm almost positive at this point like 99.9% .9 certain that phoenix is actually a monolithic design i had heard for a while that it could be um mcm but it seems like no it is not chiplet it is almost certainly monolithic with that said i think that's just about it for this particular video hopefully you've enjoyed it if you did well it's youtube you know what to do take care of yourselves guys bye for now